Me corn snakes enclosure includes all of the key elements for a proper lighting rig for this species. So I've got a long UVB tube along the top, I've got two tungsten halogen lamps just there, or incandescent lamps you might know them as, and these are supplying near infrared as well as some more visible light, and I've also got a few LED strips. I've also got a bearded dragon who's making a lot of noise, but uh, that's by the by. Now I've already spoken in other videos about why this is so important and I will circle back to it towards the end of this video, but mainly what I want to be addressing today is something called the light and shade method. Now actually because of how I have set up the lighting in this enclosure, I am not actually carrying out the light and shade method, and I'm now going to show you why. Now then, if we look about this enclosure, we can see that, um, broadly speaking, it's brighter over here. The lamps are sort of all pushed towards this end, so that over here, the greatest intensity of near infrared is found, and wait a minute. What I should be able to say is that the greatest intensity of UVB, UVA and visible light are all also the greatest at this end of the enclosure because this is what where the basking spot's meant to be. Um, this is certainly true that it's definitely the brightest visible light here because, you know, it looks brightest um, and we've got sort of the LEDs pushed towards this end. But because of this branch here, Red the corn snake, who is asleep up there, can actually get closer to the UV lamp and so access greater UVB intensities and also UVA intensities up here rather than down there. And that is a problem. So what I'm going to be doing now is setting to work on this enclosure to sort that problem using a new UV lamp and some little reflector tricks. And whilst I'm at it, I am also going to add another LED in this enclosure or replace the ones I've got. Um, just because I think this enclosure is really dark and a bit more visible light in there couldn't hurt. So the morning after I did all the lighting changes, there is still one thing that I want to do with this enclosure and that is add more decoration around the basking zone so that it gives the corn snake more of an opportunity to regulate its exposure to radiation. So uh, I'm just going to get on and do it in 3, 2, 1. Reptiles in nature thermoregulate principally by shuttling to and from sunlit areas. Sunlight consists of a mixture of electromagnetic radiation, infrared B, infrared A, visible light, UVA and UVB. Together, infrared B and especially infrared A and visible light contribute most to the warming effect that sunlight has, because yes, Visible light does warm things up. The other wavelengths contribute relatively little to heating, but reptiles still interact with them in other ways, such as by using UVB to synthesise vitamin D3 and by seeing with the aid of UVA. The crux of this is that if we want to be certain that a reptile is able to meet all its metabolic requirements and, indeed, to warm up as it would in nature, then we must provide it with radiation having a composition and intensity like the sunlight it would opt to bask in out in nature. Part of this entails ensuring that we offer all kinds of radiation at the same locations. Contrary to some of the vernacular used in reptile keeping circles, reptiles probably have no idea about different wavelengths. They don't bask just for UVB or for infrared, for instance. They just bask. In nature, sunlight combines all wavelengths such that they exist on a common gradient. For example, where there is intense infrared, there will be intense visible light and there will be intense UV. Conversely, where there is weak infrared, there will be weak visible light and weak UV. The conclusion is, sunlight is just 
sunlight. When a reptile chooses to bask, it chooses to expose itself to all of the radiation contained in sunlight at the same time. Now if we go back to thinking about enclosures, we see that unlike in nature where there is just one sun, we can't just use one lamp to replicate sunlight. Different lamps are good at offering different parts of the sunlight spectrum. Tungsten halogen lamps are good at offering infrared A and infrared B, LEDs are good at offering visible light, and fluorescent lamps are good at offering UVB. There are other lamp types we could consider, but you get the idea. Now because of this requirement to use multiple lamps in our enclosures, it's all too easy to have them spread about the roof of the vivarium such that the gradients for each of the wavelengths do not coincide. This was the issue with Mikorn Snake's old lighting setup. He could access higher UVB intensities in an infrared deficient zone than he could where visible light and infrared A and infrared B were most intense, and this simply would not occur in nature. Why is this so bad, you ask? Well, as I said earlier, it is likely that reptiles understand basking versus being in the shade, but unlikely that they understand basking in different locations to reap the benefits of exposure to different wavelengths, simply because this is not a natural scenario. The best way I can illustrate this is with a clear example. One day in my Western Green Lizard enclosure, the spot LED, which is mainly responsible for offering visible light to the basking area, had swung down a bit so that instead of illuminating the basking shelf at the top of the vivarium, it was aimed at the shelf just below. Before I rectified the issue, my female Western Green Lizard was trying to bask at the site lit by the spot LED. In this location, however, the UVB intensities are particularly low, and there is virtually no infrared A or B, so she would not have been benefiting from exposure to these particular wavelengths. If I didn't move the LED back to how it should be, it's likely that she'd have kept trying to bask under it, and in the long term may have suffered due to underexposure to the wavelengths not present at this site. With crepuscular species like corn snakes, which have a lesser dependence upon radiation than diurnal species, it's difficult to get such clear-cut examples as the one just given, but I hope that this example demonstrated what I have in mind. To solve the issues with me corn snakes lighting, I've put in a shorter UVB tube so that it isn't directly over the branch in the middle of the enclosure, and I've only put a reflector over the lamp where it is over the desired basking region. This ensures that the greatest intensity of UVB is where it should be. Additionally, having a dedicated source of visible light at the basking zone in the form of the Jungle Dawn LED bar will help me corn snake recognise the basking site as such. It's worth me pointing out that actually, these LEDs offer visible light about as intense as that experienced outside at dawn and dusk, so they are entirely appropriate for crepuscular species. Visible light does, once again, contribute to heat in our reptiles, and also has other metabolic significances we are only just recognising, so it is essential that we offer it in the right amount. It's not just some pretty extra. The other lighting change made was that I removed one of the two tungsten halogen lamps, simply because one illuminates an area sufficiently large for me corn snake to coil up under, and consequently having two lamps was unnecessary. Returning to wild reptiles and amphibians, it's worth considering that their basking behaviour is influenced by more than just sunlight itself. Reptiles and amphibians are preyed upon by many species and are consequently generally shy by nature. They won't stray far from cover. Thus, just having a flat, open basking area might not be appropriate for some species, and I'm of the opinion that this is broadly applicable to snakes. Being that they are relatively slow animals and cannot easily flee from a determined attacker, they won't feel secure basking unless some form of retreat is nearby, be that be a pond to dive in or brambles to slide under. Considering this from the opposite angle, snakes are themselves usually ambush predators to some degree, so remaining concealed is imperative when it comes to them hunting. Putting all of this together, I decided that, to ensure my corn snake Red would be content to rest at the basking site, I should add in some extra decoration. The most important piece of this is the big log at the front of the vivarium which has several functions. 
Firstly, it hides the branches and rocks behind it, providing a visual barrier between Red and the outside of his enclosure. Now he is able to bask in the open without being on immediate display, and as you can see, he is more than willing to do this when it so takes his fancy. Secondly, the side branch is angled such that Red will be able to spread himself comfortably over it and the other wood nearby, thus allowing him to bask at a more elevated position. This means that he can access the radiation gradient in the vertical as well as the horizontal dimension, and of course, it gives him more things to climb up of which I am sure he will be appreciative. Thirdly, and most interestingly, Red fits inside the side branch quite comfortably. Because it has a crack running through the top, he can be hidden inside it while still being exposed to radiation, and actually, since introducing the new decoration to his enclosure, he has spent most of his time doing exactly this. What we refer to as cryptic basking. The other log at the back of the enclosure also facilitates cryptic basking, thanks to the number of small holes in it. Another point to make which concerns decoration is that it must be used to offer shade. Again, reptiles thermoregulate by moving to and from sunlit areas, so it is just as important to offer shade as well as a good basking zone. Even reptiles which we commonly associate with bright sunlight, like my bearded dragon, can and will make ready use of shady areas in the daytime, so we must be careful to provide them with such retreats. Having just said all of that about decoration, I hope that I've made the point that decor isn't just about your vivarium looking nice. It's about making a proper environment for your animal. We should all be aware of how important environmental enrichment is for reptiles, yet it is often written off as some form of elitist zoo jargon. Hopefully you'll understand from this discourse that this really isn't the case, and that it takes careful consideration of what I can only call reptile psychology to set up an adequate enclosure. But on that note, this discussion of the light and shade method can now be considered complete, so I hope very much that you have enjoyed it and learned something from it, and uh, with that, this is going to be the end of the video, so for now, I've been JTB Reptiles teaching you how to follow nature's example, and I'll see all of you in the next video. Bye guys.